Hello friends, in this video let us talk about transducer. This video will be very much helpful if you are preparing for competitive exams like UGC NET exams or engineering service examinations. So this electrical and electronic measurements are classified into transducers, electronic measurements and electrical measurements. Hello friends, this is Arun Kamariyo. I welcome you to my channel Craving Gyan. First of all, let us discuss what is the difference between a sensor and a transducer. A sensor is a device which senses changes in the physical parameters and makes it a readable one. Example is oxygen sensor, fuel monitoring sensor, etc. Now if I am talking about transducer, a device which converts non-electrical quantity to electrical quantity, this is one definition or it is going to convert from one quantity to another quantity. This is the basic difference between a sensor and a transducer. In the case of sensor, the output will be a readable one. It can be in analog format or digital format. But in the case of transducer, the output should be in electrical quantity only. Basically, it is voltage or current. Now, if I am talking about a transducer, a transducer is a one which is going to convert non-electrical quantity to electrical quantity. If it is making use of a resistive network, then it is called as a resistive transducer. If it is making use of inductance, then it is called as inductive transducer. If it is making use of capacitance, then it is called as a capacitance transducer. Let us revise once again. A sensor is a one which senses a physical parameter and makes it a readable one. But in the case of transducer, the output will be an electrical quantity, basically voltage or current. If I am making use of resistance, then it is called as a resistive transducer. If I am making use of inductance network, then it is an inductive transducer. If I am making use of a capacitance in order to convert non-electrical quantity to electrical quantity, then it is called as a capacitive transducer. Now, if I am talking about error, error is nothing but measured value minus true value or the difference between measured value and true value. Error can be positive or negative. In most of the cases, measured value will be less than the true value, so you will be getting error as negative. But in the case of counter type A to D, you will be getting error as positive, nothing but measured value will be greater than the true value. Now, these two things are very very important. If you are designing a transducer, you can make use of a metal or you can make use of a semiconductor. But if you are making use of a metal, you can achieve high linearity but sensitivity will be less. But if you are making use of semiconductor transducer, linearity will be less but sensitivity will be more so always there exists a trade-off between linearity and sensitivity now why we are not going to prefer semiconductor transducer for heavy load measurement we are going to make use of metal transducer for low weight measurement we are going to make use of semiconductor transducer example is if you want to measure gold at the time we are going to make use of semiconductor transducer now what do you mean by stress means force acting per unit area so stress is defined as rho which is equals to force upon area what is the unit of force it is newton what is the unit of area is it is meter square so the unit of stress is newtons per meter square if i'm talking about strain it is ratio of change in physical dimension to actual dimension say suppose if i'm talking about a length then change in length divided by actual length change in dimension divided by actual dimension, change in thickness divided by actual thickness, change in resistance divided by actual resistance that determines strain. If I am talking about Hooke's law, what Hooke's law statements, stress is proportional to strain. If I want to remove the proportionality constant, I have to introduce Young's modulus that is determined by y. So Young's modulus y is given by stress divided by strain. What do you mean by stress means it is force upon area. What do you mean by strain means it is delta L divided by L. Again, the unit remains the same that is Newtons per meter square. Young's modulus is a material dependent or it depends on material characteristics. So if you are preparing for engineering service examinations, you have to straight away remember the Young's modulus of some materials. Example is Young's modulus of steel is 200 giga Newtons per meter square. If I'm talking about a quarter bridge, half bridge and full bridge, then bridge voltage V bridge equals to Vs divided by 4 into delta R divided by R in the case of quarter bridge. In the case of half bridge, Vs divided by 2 into delta R divided by R. In the case of full bridge, it is Vs into delta R divided by R. If I am talking about a sensitivity, then sensitivity of the full bridge is greater than sensitivity of the half bridge which is greater than sensitivity of the quarter bridge. So the sensitivity topic is very very important if you are preparing for even for UGC NET exams also. 
Now, if I'm talking about a Poisson's ratio, it is defined as mu equals to minus lateral variation divided by longitudinal variation, which is equals to minus epsilon y divided by epsilon x, which is equals to minus delta d divided by d, O divided by delta L divided by L, nothing but change in length divided by actual length. We know that for semiconductor gauge factor is given by 1 plus 2 mu where mu is Poisson's ratio plus delta rho divided by rho whole divided by delta L divided by L. In the case of metals or wires this quantity will be a very very low quantity. So in the case of metals or wire you are going to neglect this quantity so we will be getting gauge factor equals to 1 plus 2 mu. If you are preparing for engine service examination problems based on gauge factor is very very important. Now if I am talking about a semiconductor strain gauge, the gauge factor of semiconductor strain gauge is approximately equals to 250 but in the case of metal it is a very low value. Now let us discuss why you are not going to make use of semiconductor strain gauge. The first drawback is it is highly brittle in nature because the material is made up of semiconductor strength is very very low. Not suitable for heavy weight measurement. It depends on temperature nothing but it shows or it exhibits negative temperature coefficient. If I am talking about gauge factor of wire it is 1.6. If I am talking about gauge factor of metal it is 2. If I am talking about gauge factor of semiconductor it is 250. For doped crystal it is 5000. If I am getting output without any delay then it is a zero order system nothing but it is not having any inductors or capacitors with it. If there is a delay then order will be greater than or equals to 1. All temperature indicators are first order system, all other indicators are second order system. This is very very important. Now if you are preparing for engineering service examinations, the assertion and reasoning will be based on this topic that is passive transducer and active transducer. Now what do you mean by passive transducer means in the process of converting non-electrical quantity to electrical quantity if you are making use of external power supply then it falls under passive transducer example is resistive transducer inductive transducer as well as capacity transducer but in the case of active transducer you will not be making use of external power supply example is thermocouple piezoelectric crystal solar cell or pvc cell ph electrode you will be having only four active transducer rest of the transducers are passive transducer they may ask you identify the odd man out or identify the active transducer among the list that is given below. So this kind of questions they will be asking in UGC NET exams. If I am talking about magnetic flux density then B equals to 5 divided by A Weber per meter square or Tesla. If I am expressing in Weber per centimeter square it is Gauss. So 1 Tesla equals to 10 power 4 Gauss. This is important. This topic is very very important. Almost in each and every exam they have asked about LVDT, nothing but linear variable differential transformer. Now the construction part is you will be having one primary winding and you will be having two secondary winding let me call it as SW1 and SW2. The voltage across this is ES1 or EA. The voltage across this is ES2 or EB. It contains one primary winding and two symmetric secondary winding connected in series opposition. Connected in series opposition. One ferromagnetic core for which displacement is applied. So how much you have made a movement that one you have to measure with the help of LVTT. So in the first case if the ferromagnetic core is exactly in the middle then there will be no any displacement at that time emf generated at this point is zero nothing but ea will be equals to eb at that time you will be getting emf which is equals to zero that tells x core position will be exactly at the middle that means it has not displayed to the front side or back side or in other words it is upward movement or a downward movement in this case the ferromagnetic core has made a displacement towards an upward position here you will be getting E as positive because E as 1 minus E as 2, E as 1 is greater than E as 2. So you will be getting output voltage as positive value. So this is something like a step up transformer. But in this case the ferromagnetic core you have pulled downwards. In this case E as 1 is less than E as 2. So you will be getting E as negative. So it will be acting like a step down. So this is the curve what you will be getting, this is the magnitude plot what you will be getting but the realistic plot will be something like this because it is not exactly linear, it will be having a bend type of curve. Now 
this point is not exactly equals to zero. So you will be getting a residue. The reason for residue is because of asymmetric nature of two secondary coils. I can't guarantee that that number of turns over here and number of turns over here is the same or the material characteristics is the same or the area occupied in this winding and area occupied in this winding is the same. So material characteristics will differ. So you'll be getting a residue. Now what are the advantages of using LVDD is the first advantage is you'll be getting zero friction. The second advantage is infinite life. The third and very much important advantage is sensitivity is of the order of 40 volt per millimeter nothing but for every one millimeter displacement you'll be getting a 40 volt range at the output and fourth advantage is bi-directional displacement transducer if i'm talking about disadvantages of lvdt then it is very much sensitive to external magnetic field the second disadvantage is linearity range is limited upon this you'll be getting a non-linear curve it is very much sensitive to outside temperature and vibration so I have discussed the working part, construction, advantages and disadvantages of LVDT. This topic is very very important even for UGC NED exams as well as engineering service examinations also. Now if I am talking about electromagnetic flow meter, you are going to make use of Lorentz law. The EMF induced will be E0 equals to BLV sin theta. In the case of hardware anemometer, you are going to make use of King's law. And the property used is thermal convection. The applications include it is used in aerospace application in order to determine the outside temperature of the aeroplane. Now if I am talking about light dependent resistors, nothing but a photodiode. So this photodiodes will be operating in third quadrant whereas solar cell will be operating in fourth quadrant. In photodiode you need to talk about responsivity. Whereas in the case of solar cell, you need to talk about fill factor. So responsivity is given by eta into lambda q divided by hc, where eta is efficiency, lambda is operating wavelength, q is charge of electron, which is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19, h is the Planck's constant, c is the speed of light, which is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. Broadly, I can classify temperature as resistor, temperature detector, thermistor, and thermocouple. What do you mean by thermistor means it is thermally sensitive resistor. Now if I am talking about RTD, the change in temperature RT which is equal to R0 into 1 plus alpha times of delta T where R0 is the initial temperature and delta T is nothing but the change in temperature. The coefficient of temperature is expressed as alpha. So alpha equals to RT minus R0 divided by R0 times of delta T. The unit is per degree centigrade. One thing what you have to remember is RTD is going to exhibit positive temperature coefficient whereas thermistor it is going to exhibit negative temperature coefficient. So this is very very important. RTD is going to exhibit positive temperature coefficient and thermistor is going to exhibit negative temperature coefficient. So the change in resistance RT which is equal to R0 into E power beta into 1 divided by T minus 1 divided by T0. So this is the curve you will be getting in the case of thermistor. Now if I am talking about the thermocouple, it works on Seebeck effect. Here two different metals are joined and the temperature difference is maintained in the case of thermocouple. But in the case of Thomson effect, in a single material itself, temperature difference is maintained. But if I am talking about Peltier effect, two different materials are coupled via battery, then the temperature difference is maintained. If you are preparing for UGC NET exams, they may ask you thermocouple works on C big effect, you should tell. And in the case of RTD, it is going to exhibit positive temperature coefficient. In the case of thermistor, it is going to exhibit negative temperature coefficient. Also, we need to talk about Thomson effect and Peltier effect. N number of times, this question is they have asked. Now, if I am talking about pH of an electrode, then pH is expressed as negative logarithmic of H plus ions. This H plus ions is nothing but hydrogen ions. So pH scale will be lying from 0 to 14, 0 to 7 the solution will be acidic in nature, 7 to 14 the solution is going to tell it is basic in nature, 7 means it is neither acidic nor basic nothing but it is neutral in nature. So 0 means it is more acidic, 14 means more basic. In general human blood pH level will be 6.8 nothing but it is slightly acidic in nature, rainwater is 5.8 which is slightly acidic in nature. If I am talking about sesamic, it is force to displacement conversion or measurement. 
if i'm talking about seismograph you are going to make use of earthquake measurements with the help of richter scale so in this video i have discussed mechanical measurements in the next video let us talk about electrical measurements and electronic measurements if you have followed with my lecture please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel craning yan all the best for your exams thank you